have you noticed over the past year and a half your memory getting slowly worse? And maybe even before the events of 2020 and now 2021, did you notice previously your memory getting gradually worse over time? If that's the case, then in this video I'm going to show you a hidden reason of why that might actually be happening and exactly what to do about it. So for those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Rumsey and I share my insights, knowledge and experience on how I overcame various mental health issues over the past decade. And this includes things like depersonalization, derealization, depression, anxiety, maladaptive daydreaming, video game addiction and more. And in this journey of recovery, one of the key things that I kept experiencing that was part of all of these mental health issues, but especially maladaptive daydreaming and depersonalization was just very poor memory. My memory used to be so bad that at its worst, I would walk into a room and not remember why I was in that room to begin with. And then I would discover that somebody had previously told me to go and do something. And somehow the entire event, it was as if like it never took place in my mind. That's how bad it used to be. Thankfully, from all these mental health issues, I'm basically like 99% recovered. So in this video, I want to share with you what I discovered to be the core fundamental reason for why these mental health issues, if you're experiencing them, can lead to and is likely to lead to poor memory. But I should point out, for me at least, it was a temporary experience, thankfully. So it doesn't have to be a permanent one. I also believe that poor memory is going to be more of an issue as time goes on because of the recent events of 2020 and 2021. And so this is the core fundamental reason as to why this happens. So if you have issues like chronic depression, anxiety, or even stress, or things that are more extreme like depersonalization symptoms or maladaptive daydreaming, what's really happening at a core fundamental level in your internal experience is that you're essentially having overwhelming internal experiences and by overwhelming what i mean is that your point of attention and what you're experiencing is largely made up by these symptoms so for somebody who doesn't have mental health issues such as the ones i've discussed their experience of reality their point of attention and what and the information that they take in is just going to be what their senses take in and their thoughts but for somebody who has mental health issues, there's an additional layer of all this other internal experiences bombarding them, which makes it so much harder to focus and concentrate. And because we have a limited attention span as humans, so if we're taking in external information, let's say we're taking in something somebody's saying, let's say we're trying to focus and take in, let's say if we're writing something or we're doing a task. For somebody without mental health issues, this is reasonably straightforward because their point of attention is open to those experiences and that's all that they're going to experience. And if you have mental health issues, such as the ones I discussed, then you have not just the information you're taking in or what on the task you're trying to do, but then you also have the overwhelming experiences of, let's say, depression with the emotions and the thoughts or anxiety with your body being in that fight or flight response. Or with depersonalization, you have these these are visual symptoms going on as well. I have maladaptive daydreaming. Your, your imagination is essentially taking over and you're getting lost in your daydreams. So what this means is that if you imagine your point of attention being, let's say, a cup, and let's say you're pouring in the water with the tasks that you're doing, there's a limited amount of things that you can fill in that cup. So that means there's a limited amount of information that can be in your attention span. So with somebody who has mental health issues, your cup is already, let's say, half filled or more with all of the symptoms you're experiencing. So then when you try and do an additional task that requires a certain amount of, let's say, water or attention, you just can't, your cup's gonna overflow, it becomes overwhelming. So basic tasks become difficult because it's essentially taking up your attention span. And it really does boil down to that, where you place your attention and what takes away your attention. So if you've had that experience of somebody talking to you and telling you, you know, do this or can you do this, or they're trying to just have a normal conversation, 
and then you noticed your, you don't remember what just happened, it's likely what's happened is the symptoms you're experiencing have, has taken your attention away. And so you didn't actually, you weren't able to record the information to begin with, or you were only able to record very little. So then when you come back to reality and you're like, okay, what was I doing? Most of the information wasn't taken into your brain. At least consciously it wasn't taken in. And so that's why it can seem like the, the event never took place to begin with. And this is because if you're having all these overwhelming mental experiences, it's just so difficult because it's so distracting. And if somebody who hasn't experienced mental health issues find this a little bit abstract or hard to understand, uh, there's a very simple way I can, I can explain this, which is imagine, for example, you woke up one day and you had aches and pains in your body and let's say very itchy skin. And then let's say you had to do some basic tasks. It would be much more difficult because your point of attention is going to go on the uncomfortable and painful experience because your mind is going to prioritize anything that's creating pain for you. It's going to prioritize your pointing your attention to the pain because it wants you to solve it, right? The, one of the primary functions of your mind is to ensure your survival. So it's going to focus your attention more, more likely on a source of pain. So if you're experiencing this pain, that is taking up a lot of your attention, which will make it much more harder to focus on what you're doing because it's so distracting. And so because of the recent events, I think people are experiencing a lot of chronic stress. And so this will also affect their memory because if you're experiencing in your mind, body and emotions, these symptoms and they're becoming overwhelming, it, it is just going to be that much harder to concentrate because your attention is constantly going on them and it's extremely hard to ignore. So what kind of things can you do to manage and to improve your memory? So the number one thing is that you have to resolve the root cause of all of the symptoms. That is the, that is the main thing you have to do, which I know sounds obvious, but if you're in that state of mind, it becomes so hard even sometimes to think straight because you have all of those symptoms going on. So creating coherent thoughts and perceiving and judging whether something makes sense or not can be difficult. So of course, number one thing I'm always gonna recommend is therapy so you can understand what's going on in your mind, your emotions, and to unpack your past and to make sense of how those could be leading to the symptoms you're experiencing now. That's the number one fundamental thing I'm always going to recommend. And secondly, you need to just tell people about the memory issues that you're experiencing. And this is because it can feel almost embarrassing or sometimes we can feel guilt or shame for having those kind of issues, especially if we're younger and we don't expect somebody of our age to be getting those kind of issues. And so in that, in that state of mind where we're worried about people finding out, it's very easy to try and hide it. But you're actually creating more problems for yourself because in trying to hide it, you're just creating more stress. And of course, the stress is what adds to the difficulty in um, remembering things. So it actually affects your memory badly by not telling people. So once you tell people, well, I found that actually it creates a lot of relief and reduce the stress. And so there are some very simple things you can do that will help you to manage the memory issues and help you to remember. And these seem obvious, but again, when you're in that state of mind, it can be very difficult to think of these things. And the first thing is use your phone and use the reminders on your phone to help you to remember things. So what I used to do is pretty much anytime I had to remember something, either I would write it down or what was better was I would schedule it in my phone as a reminder. And at first it may seem difficult because you have to remember to put that in your phone. But the more you do this, the more you get into the habit of it, at the very least, you'll find that you'll be reminded of things more frequently. And this in time can actually make you better at putting things down in that phone. And then related to this is using post-it notes or writing down notes and sticking them in places where you know you will look at. So for example, if there's something you know you need to do or certain things you know you need to do before you leave your house, for example, write down that list of things you need to do, stick it on your front door. So assuming that you do forget something, you're gonna see that note as you come to open the door and you'll be like, oh yeah, I need to do these things. Or for example, the things you need to do before you go to bed, stick that note on your pillow. So you're using your daily habits of the location of where you're going to be 
as a way to set up these reminders. So this way you know, well, when I go to my bed, I'm gonna see that list of things to do. So even if you forget it, to sleep, you're gonna to have to see that note. So you're gonna to have to then go through that list. Eric, you can do this for other things, maybe stick notes on your TV, on your laptop screen or on chairs. So, so you know, well, when I go to this room, or when I go to this place, there'll be a note and it will have the things I need to remember. It doesn't mean that you'll do this perfectly, but I found it seriously helped me. Another thing I can recommend is keeping an hourly journal of the things that you were doing, what you were thinking and how you were feeling. And the reason why I can suggest doing this is because this is getting you to be in the habit of, play, of getting your attention on what you're doing. Instead of your attention being hijacked by your mind and being focused on the symptoms. So at first it can be difficult because you may be writing thinking, oh, what did I do? What was I doing? But the more you do this, because you're focused more on just remembering what you did during that hour, your mind will be over time focused on pay paying attention to what, you've, what you're actually doing in that moment. This is also useful if you're experiencing very bad memory issues and you're noticing that you're experiencing missing time where it feels like time has been sliced out of your reality because that whole memory chunk isn't there. So if you're like, what was I doing for the past two hours? You can look and maybe if you, even if you have just a few notes, that can trigger the memory that maybe has been, has been gone. And since your point of attention is exactly what is needed to focus and to record things to create memories, it makes sense to start a daily mindfulness meditation practice. And this is because part of it is that it's naturally training your ability to place your point of attention on something. And when your attention goes away, you're bringing it back to that one thing. So the most common thing is keeping your point of attention on your breathing. So when your attention goes away, you're simply bringing it back. And I found over time, this massively improved my ability to concentrate, which then ultimately improved my ability to remember things because now my point of attention, even if it did go in the symptoms, I was able to very quickly bring it back to what I'm doing, which meant I'm able to absorb the information so the memory can be created. Whereas previously, I'd be doing something and then my point of attention would go somewhere on noticing symptoms, or I'd go into maladaptive daydreaming, and then maybe 10 minutes would pass by and I'd come back to reality and be like, ah, what was I doing? And this is because I hadn't yet trained in the ability to move and control my point of attention easily. So essentially my mind was hijacking my point of attention. So with meditation, you're training your, in your ability to keep your point of attention where it needs to be, which means that you can then stay in the present moment so you can absorb the information of what's happening, which means then that you can create the memories to begin with. And so to get you started on practicing mindfulness meditation, there are so many guided meditations on YouTube. I highly recommend checking them out. Start with short ones that are maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Practice them daily, but don't rely on the guided meditations because that's just getting a point of attention to focus on the audio, for example. So it's good as a way to learn, which is what I did. But eventually, once you understand the steps, you want to do the meditation daily without using the, the guided audio. So start with them on YouTube, get used to it after a couple of weeks. Once you know what to do, try to, try to do meditation without actually using the audio. So this then over time for me massively helped me to remember things because I was able to actually absorb the information to begin with. And what I noticed finally is that sometimes these symptoms can be so stressful that the mind essentially kind of blurs it all into one. So you can go through a day and it can feel like nothing really happened. And I think this is actually a coping mechanism that our mind uses because if things are overwhelming then, and your feel point of attention has been mostly on the symptoms, that is going to seem like a blur. And I don't think your mind wants you to remember those painful experiences. So I think it kind of almost compartmentalizes it and stores it as one thing. That's just kind of why I noticed happened to me, so I wonder if it happens to other people. So I think it is a coping mechanism. And so really, the bottom line of all of this is the memory issues is a symptom of other mental health issues. So at least for me, and I believe others who have, who have had similar experiences to me or are currently going through it, 
once you resolve the underlying symptoms, that's then when the memory concentration issues improve. So for me, for example, the underlying issues were suppressed trauma, unresolved emotional pain, chronic stress that had built up over time and was never resolved. So once I started going for therapy, once I learned mindfulness meditation to be able to keep my point of attention where I needed it to be, once I learned various things I discussed in my other videos, such as being able to feel my emotions so they can be released, once I understood what was going on, how they all were linked together, this is then what started the process of the symptoms being reduced because I was able to reduce the stress, I was able to feel my emotions so I wasn't resisting them. And overall, because the stress was being reduced, this then meant that the symptoms reduced, which then meant that the memory issues got better. Because now, because of the reduction of the symptoms, it was just so much easier to focus because I didn't have all these distractions going on. So thanks for watching. If you found this useful, click the like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified of when I release the next video. And let me know in the comments, what kind of things do you experience with memory issues? And if you have resolved underlying uh, traumas or emotional pain and other psychological symptoms, did you notice your memory getting better? So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.